Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. It is Dim Dim. <laughs> Guys, I'm sorry, some of you actually call me Dim Dim. For some reason, you guys have shortened my name to Dim Dim a lot. DMs, comment sections, you guys are calling me Dim Dim. So I might start calling myself Dim Dim these days. But guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Dim Ma. Today, I'm going to be chatting with you guys. I haven't done one of these in a very long time. I told you guys to ask me questions as usual on Instagram. And you guys asked me, I love these, you guys love them. And these type of videos, they kind of give me an opportunity to talk about things that it might not even occur to me to talk about here on this channel. Before I start, however, I'd like to thank Unica for sponsoring this video. They were nice enough to send me this cap and this shirt. So this is a close up of the cap, okay? And then a t-shirt as well. It also, can you focus please? It also has the Unicaf logo, so it looks like this. If you don't know what Unicaf is, Unicaf is a global educational organization based in Europe through which eligible candidates can apply for a diverse range of programs which are offered in partnership with some uk and us universities and the unicaf universities here in africa on the continent they are physically present through learning centers or university campuses in 12 african countries these countries are egypt ghana kenya malawi morocco nigeria uganda zimbabwe south africa somalia zambia rwanda and they also have offices in europe it doesn't matter who you are or what you are or where you are in your life you could be um, a young graduate like me back in 2014 who was looking to get a second degree you could be a farmer you could be an entrepreneur you could be a lawyer it doesn't matter there is a suitable degree program or a short course for you through unicaf so far, they've awarded over $100 million worth of scholarship to over 30,000 applicants in 156 countries for them to study online. You can also apply for a scholarship if you are interested. Just use the link in the description box of this video or you can download the Unicaf app. It's available on the iOS app store and on the Google Play store and just fill out the required form, fill in your information and submit it in seconds. And that's it okay so if you're interested just check my description box okay the description box the description box under this video okay so the first question that i have here is from tayo Ayana films and he's like how do i become a millionaire in dollars tayo you are a joker first of all tayo is not even on lockdown with us in nigeria think about it the next one is from oluwajei classic and he <laughs> do you have the beauty manual god used to create you Please, I want to follow the instructions. You're so cute. The next one is also by Oluwase Classic and he asks, what are your love languages? For me, my love languages are act of service and gift giving. And I feel like we always have stories to back up the reason why these are our love languages. But I actually started thinking about it around the time that this conversation started on social media back in 2018. And that's what it is for me. It's always been that. And that's also how I show love to people. Situations where I feel helpless, like nothing can actually be done. Physically, I just try to get that person something to just kind of make them feel better or just do something for the person. Like like, you know help them out with something so these are just my love languages it's how i like to show love it's how i like to receive love okay the next one is love you dim dim what did i say you guys call me dim dim Olua Shei Classic is still asking, my question is how do you not let negative comments get to you? I've talked about this several times and it's just like, just having it at the back of my mind that these people are going through or whoever has left because I feel like in their day-to-day -day, like lives when they approach people in different situations a lot of people do, like 99.999 actually people who leave hate comments on social media they don't talk to people in real life the way they tend to talk to people online you know and it's because first of all when you're talking to the person in real life there are consequences even when people like hide very vile comments on that like you know leave them under the canopy of constructive criticism if you know how you like someone to tell you something, talk to people online like that. If you know how you like someone to talk to you, especially when they don't, because you never know what anybody is going through. You never know. If your comment is very vile, I always just, it's just a red flag that something is going on with this person. Because if you were okay, you don't say things like that to anybody. So sometimes I even pray for them. I've said it before, we are laughing. I pray for them. I'm like, God, please, whatever this person is going through, heal them. 
the next one is how are you how are you doing guys i have a lot of how are you's and how are you doings and i know where these questions are coming from and i love you guys so much and i really appreciate it i don't really think that i'm going to answer all of them but for everybody who asked me how i was for this q and a on instagram please know that i'm doing well i'm taking things you know easy as well at the beginning of the lockdown like i was like ah this is business as usual for me i'm always at home there's nothing spectacular about this i'll just carry on but i think after one month, one time when I struggled to get groceries and I went out to buy groceries and I was stopped by the police and the whole thing was just stressful. Like it really started getting to me, but then that was like a stump I had for like two weeks. I'm back to feeling like myself right now. And I'm very optimistic about where we are. Hopefully things get better soon. Um, so this one is from good underscore soul 512 and she's like what's your take on how the nigerian government is handling the virus and to be very honest like i don't like i just feel like <sighs> we've eased our lockdown here in nigeria if you don't if you're not nigerian know that nigeria is really not on lockdown anymore like some countries are still to be very honest it was either that or let our economy crash and let people go hungry you know some rich countries very rich countries like the US and all of that, like, you know, the UK, they can afford to stay on lockdown for, you know, for a very long time. And they, they can afford to. Nigeria, they just can't. Even for like two, three weeks that they kind of put us in lockdown, a lot of people were grumbling. And you don't really blame them because like, you've taken away their means of livelihood and you're not talking about feeding them. So it was either prepare for the consequences of that when like hungry people take the streets or what they've done and kind of just let the virus do its worst. I'll just say, please protect yourself, protect yourself, buy gloves, buy masks, just protect yourself. So this is from Zainab Sharif and she's like, how do you approach brands you would like to work with? I just sent an email, a very detailed email and I kind of just show my reach, detail my reach, show engagement on my platform and how high it is, show examples of past collaborations that I have done in the past, um, send my rates alongside that as well, um, give them options or give them the ideas that I possibly have or how I intend to collaborate with them. Kind of show them like my analytics as well, these things matter. I really, 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 advice that if you're approaching anyone to work with them let it be a brand that you've been following for a while you've possibly used their products you're interested in give reasons why you're interested in working with them that's how i tend to do it and this is from chidalo.u how many siblings do you have and how was it growing up in enugu growing up in enugu was actually really cool and chill for me i loved it and i have six siblings we're seven children in my house how does it feel like so this is from underscore paula underscore how does it feel for your dreams to come true it's actually a good feeling i'm actually living out some of my dreams right now some of them you know i'm still working on i feel like one thing that i have to i'll really advise is like i feel like it's so good that when they come sometimes you can be so busy and focus on working on other things and you don't even just sit down to just like just like sit down to just appreciate the moment it feels good to be very honest this one is from underscore keji and he asks how tall are you i am 510 Okay, so this is from Mary Jane underscore Ebuawa and it's do you hate dogs? Guys, I hate is a strong word, but I don't like dogs. Um, and it's because I was bitten by a dog when I was a child. You know, the dog bit me in my leg. I was running like a mad person screaming. The dog was chasing me and it bit my leg. Even the family that I come from, they are dog lovers. We have a lot of dog lovers. Most of the time we have about four to five dogs in the compound at once. You will never see me around them. My siblings like playing with them, but you never, I just don't. I don't know, I don't like them. So this is from Chris Keller and it's how are you doing? How is your family? I miss Noma on your channel. A lot of you are actually asking about Noma. Noma is fine, she's working in Abuja. I'm the only person from my family who lives in Lagos. The rest live in Abuja or Enugu. So we are all not together, but Noma is fine. And I'm going to tell her that you guys are asking about her. Okay, so this is from ND Impact and it asks, what triggered you to take your first bold step? You are so beautiful by the way thank you so much you're so sweet um i've talked about this before in my video of just my nigerian parents didn't want me to do youtube it was me sitting down and just realizing that if i didn't pursue this around the time that i did that someone else guys please there's construction going on if you can hear it please ignore it but it was me just like telling myself that if i didn't pursue this around that time that someone else would come and start it and do it bigger and better or do it just the way that i wanted to do it and then i'll just like live in a had i known state for a very long time this is from miss chichi underscore and she's like hi Dima, where did you get your cooking 
pots and pans from this is actually a very common question funny enough a lot of you have asked me i got my set the ones that i use whenever i'm cooking on my vlogs i got that from shoprite and i went to shoprite two weeks ago and i still saw it and it was a lot cheaper guys i got that set in 2018 two years ago and it sold for 50k i got it from the shoprite at novara mall at the time and i remember calling my mom i was like mom this pot looks so good it's cast aluminium but the whole thing is going for 50k like i've never spent that much on pots before and my mom kind of asked me to kind of talk her through the features that the set comes in and after everything after that conversation like i was literally standing in the aisle talking to my mom she was like it sounds like a good investment you can get it if you want to i went to shop right like two weeks ago because I needed an extra set of pots and I saw the same set in ShopRite and Jack on Day. I'm going to try to insert is a picture on the screen and it was selling for 35,000 which is way cheaper so guys check ShopRite they have good pots so the next one is from cute Trini and she's like are you still entertaining new friends yes like you know if we click we click you know the next one again is from Cute Trini and she's asking, what do you think about multi-level marketing? MLMs, pyramid schemes, I am not a big fan. I feel like they just sell you dreams most of the time and people who join these things and spend a long time just slaving for them, they never see the results that kind of lured them in. When I was in uni, when I was doing my masters in Warwick, like there was an entire module dedicated to kind of just debunking MLMs and pyramid schemes. Just kind of telling you that most of the time they're really not worth it. Are there people who have who are like, you know, significant success stories from them, yes, but then don't really let those things fool you. Most of the time, they just come across as shady to me. That's it. Okay, so this next one is from Backley underscore Ashley, and she's asking, in your opinion, why do you think most women don't like identifying as feminists when they clearly are? This is a very, very good question because I remember having... I don't want to call it an argument, but kind of a heated discussion with a very good friend of mine, I think about two years ago, because she was clearly a feminist to me, guys. Like, she was even ha more hardcore than I am. She, like, her views when it comes to a lot of societal constructs, like men and how they treat people and stuff, like, she was very vocal. I feel like it's because of the consequences or because of the amount of just like stigma that has been attached to the word and how easy it is for men and people to come for you whenever you publicly come out and identify as one. But then feminism has very like strong, it has a very clear definition and there are ideals that whether you consider someone bitter or not, it doesn't really change that, if that makes any sense. You know, just think of every other movement and even religion. We have extremists in different religions. Islam, there are extremists. Christianity, there are extremists. And there are people who do things that we consider irrational, right? That don't fit into our own definition of what we know the religion to be. We don't stop being Christians because of those people. You know, we still know Christ for who he is. For example, I'm Christian, so I'm saying I still know God for who he is. So I'm not going to come and say I'm not a Christian because I, this pastor was doing XYZ or this person was doing xyz i just feel like it doesn't make sense and that's kind of the excuse that people tend to give sometimes so the next one is from is from temi banjo and she asks why don't you use eyeliner i used to be a big eyeliner stan here i think that makeup is really like style to be very honest like you know maybe in the next few years i'll be into liners again but I just loved liners because they would just like kind of wing out my eyes and give my eyes a certain shape. I've learned since that you can create that same illusion with a winged pair of lashes, like a pair of lashes that wing out or even eyeshadow application. So you don't necessarily need eyeliner for that. This one is from Chinonya underscore Odiri and it's how do I lighten my underarms. I've seen two hacks that people have sworn by that I haven't necessarily used. One is using lemon. Just cut lemon and kind of rub it on your armpits, let it sit and then rinse it off. Do it often maybe two or three times a week for a period of time you're going to see significant difference there's also the hack where people mix lemon and baking soda not try that but one thing i know that helped me was i stopped using deodorants that have aluminium in them as much there was a time i cut them off completely and i went the natural route i was using um am and hammer deodorant and it has baking soda in it but then Guys, the thing about that is that there are certain fabrics that just don't go well. Like, if you know that you're going to be wearing chiffon or silk or something light, please use proper deodorant. So what I do is, on the days where I'm wearing certain fabrics and I'm going out, I use like a good deodorant, like maybe the ones from Dove or Nivea. But every day, like in the house, I use the Arm and Hammer um, deodorant. It's a natural, it has natural deodorant. Deodor 
I cannot pronounce that word, but it has natural ingredients. This next one is from Dera Ezemoka and she asks, what camera and editing apps do you use? I use Adobe Lightroom to edit my Instagram pictures and I use Canva to edit my thumbnails and I use a Canon 5D to take some of my Instagram pictures and to film my videos and I use my iPhone to take a lot of my pictures on Instagram as well. Okay, so I have a lot of questions from people here asking me how do I stay motivated. I'm just going to answer it once and I've also touched on this in previous Q&As. For me, it's just remembering why I started what I started. I also kind of just have people like a good support system try to build one. I have people who just kind of remind me how well I'm doing. I think that I just rely on phone calls with them sometimes to just kind of boost my mood. So that's what I do. And then when it comes to like just creating and I don't, I'm looking, I'm struggling with ideas. Most of the time I just watch videos. I always be like, oh, let me take a break and watch YouTube videos. And then before you, I, I'm done, I'm thinking, oh, my audience might actually like it when I talked about this or if I did something like this, you know? So this one is from Onyinye underscore. Oh, and she's asking, is it okay to keep in touch with a toxic ex and friends because of fear? I don't think it's okay. I don't think it's okay for you to keep in touch with someone and your main reason is fear. I know those type of people. I know those type of situations. And I feel like you should just stop talking to them. You know, if I want to keep talking to you, I want to keep talking to you because I want to keep talking to you, not because I am scared of the consequences of not talking to you. So... Yeah. So this is from Nkem Njoko and she's asking food versus sleep. In all honesty, I think I am getting to that age where sleep is important, more important than so many things, please. I feel like if I don't sleep at a certain time, my head starts turning on its own. And I know that if I don't eat, I'll eventually die. But if we're talking of short term, you know, at least when I'm sleeping, I'm not hungry. Okay, so this is from JW underscore FOI and it's how old are you? I've said this, I've answered this so many times and I am 29, I'll turn 30 soon. The next one is from Kemu Wobu and she's asking, do you sometimes feel overwhelmed with so much PR items to review? Sometimes like if I'm getting packages back to back, packages back to back, it gets overwhelming just thinking about the fact that I have to sort them and kind of categorize them for work. But um, no, not really. I get excited still about PR packages, right? And I just try to sort them out as soon as I can. I feel like the moment I sort them out, that anxiety kind of goes away, you know? This one is from Total Glory underscore, and she's asking, how do you survive so well with one stream of income? Guys, your, your, your average influencer does not have one stream of income. I feel like this is a very, very big misconception. Your average influencer has multiple streams of income. Someone like me who is a creator on YouTube, I'm making money from the platform itself. And the amount of money I make depends on just like the amount of hard work I put into it. And YouTube money, you can actually, you stand to make a lot if you're serious because it comes in dollars. Your average influencer is also making money from Instagram if they have good presence there. A lot of brands tend to prefer that. So different platforms like, you know, and I also do consulting. There are things that I was working on or I, the plan was to start working on them in March, but then travel just got really restricted and I couldn't do anything. And hopefully there are things that I'm able to put out next year. Still. And the way I see the structure in my head right now, I can actually start making money from one angle and still like leave off the other ones if I am serious. So, so this is from underscore underscore Neka underscore and it's, she's asking what is the most troubling aspect of being a full-time YouTuber? I think it's people still thinking and even people who, who should understand not understanding the amount of work that goes into YouTube, especially people who you see posting. If you know anybody that is posting more than two times a week on YouTube, most like their, their social life is suffering in one way or the other. Especially if they don't have like editors and people who they outsource so many things to, it's a lot of work. And it's people just underestimating how much work at this point. That's, I think, what is irritating me right now. It's people not understanding that it's a lot of work. This is from Ishaka and it's asking, what is your real name? I don't, I don't understand. I have a lot of love yous here. This is from Lady Chin underscore R. How are you so sweet? Love you, sis. I love you too. Thank you so much to everybody who's saying that they love me here. So this is from underscore Ida underscore Peters underscore. What advice will you give someone who is about to finish NYSC and isn't really buoyant financially? Around the time I finished NYSC, I wasn't buoyant financially either. Like I was making what my Alawi allowance out of the 20K, 19,000 something they were paying us at the time was 7,000 Naira. I didn't have money. But then what I've just learned over the years, and this is outside of NYC as well, is to just spend on things that are necessary. Even up on 
now is still a mantra that I like it's big for me because there's so many things that I love guys I'm a bag lover I've talked about it here before but I can't quite afford half of the designer bags I see on Instagram or that I even want right but I know that if I keep working towards my goals that I'll get to a point where it'll be easy for me to get them I'll not recommend that you go off and buy things because you're letting people tension you spend on things that are important it's not like even like these bags that I'm saying right now for example that I have never had enough money to buy them for example you know I know that my current cameras the camera that I'm using is about three thousand dollars when I had that three thousand dollars at my disposal it was either a bag or upgrade my filming equipment or upgrade my camera I use it to go and buy camera you know so buy on things that kind of just like you're investing in yourself you know or buy on things that are essential so the next one is from glory godfrey and it's asking have you tried rum and passion cakes you need to i haven't i love cakes so much my birthday is actually next month and ugh, guys i had such big plans for my birthday this year i was supposed to go to dubai as of february me you know federal norma some of my friends we are looking at you know tickets we are trying to get tickets for dubai before things are looking shaky the plan was to do my birthday in dubai this year so me and a group of friends we are planning to go and everybody was so excited about it here we are. This was supposed to be that big birthday for me. Hopefully I do it big next year by the grace of God. If you people remember my last birthday last year, my sister Uju came. It was just me and Uju. We went somewhere, we had dinner. It was just, we were like, oh, don't worry. Like next year's one is going to be big. So I'm not even worried about like the way I'm celebrating this one. So I'll make the best, okay, of it. This is how old are you again? And what? Where in Imo state are you from? Guys, I'm from Anambra. My mom is from Imo. I've seen people think say to me that, or ask, where in Enugu am I from or where in Imo am I from? Guys, my dad is from Anambra, my mom is from Imo, I grew up in Enugu, I'm from Anambra state. Okay, so this is from Le Rato, Le underscore Rato, and she's asking, what do you miss most about normal life um, without lockdown? Guys, it's so funny because I consider myself a homebody, but I miss outside basically i miss events lagos we have nice events here all the time and i miss going for them it's so funny because i consider these events to be stressful sometimes but i haven't gotten an invite in so long it's stressful so this one is from the real fortune underscore oma and she's asking do you get criticized for doing what you do and if yes how do you ha how do you handle it in the beginning yes i had a lot of people talk shit you know when i said i was going to do this full time they were like oh yeah let's see there was so much there was so much back talk actually thinking about it from people who didn't have any business saying nonsense but i've gotten to a point now where i feel like my work kind of speaks for itself even if you don't know how i'm making money from it or you don't understand how youtube are making money and all this works it's the fact that you're seeing me on the news you're seeing me in articles you're seeing people talking about me so i think that my work kind of speaks for itself at this point now and this is from Blossom Speaks, and she's asking, how are you so amazing? You've made my journey to womanhood more purposeful. God bless you. This is so sweet. Thank you. So this is from Kikara underscore one, and she's asking, aren't you scared as a female living alone? I don't know. I'm 25, and I can't move out, and I live alone. <laughs> See, I lived my life in my father's house for a very long time. Even uni four years when people were on campus enjoying life, exploring, I had a coffee of 6 p.m., and I lived in the house in Enugu. When it was time for youth service, I was like... I'm going, you know, I came to Lagos and I kind of had a conversation with my parents and we agreed. So I left the house for the first time in 2012. I started living alone in 2012, lived in Lagos for about a year and a half, moved back to Enugu, moved to the UK for two years, moved back to Nigeria in 2016 and I've been living alone since. There's nothing to be scared about. I think that is actually something I would highly recommend because a lot of the time here, culture expects you to move from your father's house straight into a man's house, like from one man's house to another man's house. And I think that there is really, really something important about having time so actually live on your own and know the things that you like like i don't know i feel like this period in my life is so important to me and i'm happy that i am living it so this is from reese's piece and she's asking would you rather have no eyebrows or no lashes i'll say no lashes please if i don't have eyebrows hey god i think that i can manage without lashes i can always go and buy the artificial ones but eyebrows there are no artificial eyebrows so this is from angel underscore E0317 and she's asking if you're given an opportunity to pick one between cake and Enugu Abacha. Enugu Abacha for sure. Like I love cake, but Enugu Abacha is special. So this is asking, this is from Ne underscore C and she's asking, are you ever going to quit YouTube for something else? Where I am, I don't see it happening anytime soon. 
you know, I, I don't think that I'll be doing YouTube for the rest of my life, but I don't see it. I think I'm kind of in my prime or I haven't even reached my prime right now or my peak in YouTube. So I'm going to keep going at it. But what I'm doing right now is such a blessing to me. I work for myself. I'm doing well, like I'm making money off of it. So just me quitting it right now is just like, or even anytime soon is just ridiculous. So I'm going to play it out and hopefully I get to my peak and prime and I get to that point where at least 1 million subscribers, hopefully. So I don't really see myself quitting YouTube anytime soon. Okay, so this is from Sums underscore and she's asking, can you relate more with Kambili or Ife Melo or Kainene? And these are all characters in Chimamanda's books, right? And I think that of all the main characters that Chimamanda has ever written about, I can relate so strongly with Kambili. Kambili was the main character in Purple Hibiscus. That book made me feel things, right? Kainene was a character in Half of a Yellow Sun and Ife Melo was a character in Americana. I feel like of all the female characters that Ch Chimamanda has ever written about, I can relate the least to Ife Melo of Americana. But Kambili, yes. So this is from Why Can Nigerian Parents Never Apologize? How do I even forgive and forget the abuse from a parent? This is a very, very valid question. You know, if you are in an environment where you feel like it's becoming too toxic for you and that the people who are around you are not respecting you as an individual, I feel like that is the point to leave. I have actually more than one person asking a similar question. I think it's time to leave. I don't believe in this whole thing of saying a girl must remain in her father's house or move to her husband's house from there. Please save up money. I know that it's not the easiest thing, but find a way to leave. Even for maybe find someone you can live with and split rent. Don't put yourself through torture because these things, they leave scars that they don't disappear that easily. So this is from Orezi underscore and she's asking when you get married, are you moving, are you going to move to his house or will he move to yours? We will move to another house. When it comes to dating, do you think religion is important? If so, why? I think that religion is actually important. I'm not even going to lie. Sometimes here, Seth, you can even boil down to denomination being important, but I think that religion is very important. And sometimes when our parents will talk, we'll be like, why? But then I've just like, at least I'm at that age now where I know people who are just getting married and it tends to kind of reduce the amount of differences or friction you guys work through. I know people who have done it and done it well. Yoruba people are actually very popular. Like, you know, you find it here a lot where like a Christian person marries a Muslim person. It's hardly ever the case with Igbo people, but have a conversation about it. Um, this is from Miss Gloria and she's asking, what's your favorite ice cream flavor? I would say cake batter um, and I love it with brownies. So I've seen people asking, did I ever work in 95 or what did I do before I started doing YouTube? Guys, I went from school to YouTube. I really never worked in 95. I've answered this before as well. So this is from aim underscore WMK and he's asking, can a guy have a YouTube channel that is about fashion and lifestyle? I know guys who are killing it in the fashion and lifestyle scene. See Danola Gray, he doesn't have a YouTube channel, for example, but I think that there's actually a demographic who are keen. We want to watch these things. I personally would watch, so. So this is from Dero Wumi, and she's asking, um, do you think it's a good investment to do your master's in the UK? Please answer yes, I think, but I think that it's very important to make sure that you choose a course that you intend to use or a degree that you intend to use, because I've seen so many people going to the UK to do master's, and they go and choose these bubble where courses that they never used to do anything. I even explained of how, I've explained to you guys before of how my parents wanted me to do accounting. I knew that if I had gone and done accounting for my master's, I would never have used that degree for anything. Thing. So I made sure to pick a course that would help me in my life. I think it's a very good investment. Some of the lessons I learned while I was doing my master's will help me for the rest of my life. So this is from Tian underscore C and she's asking how many kids do you want and what gender? I want two kids or three max, a boy and girl. Hmm? Yeah. So guys, that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you had any question that I did not answer, please check my previous Q&As. A lot of the questions that I skipped, I had already answered them before. I'm going to have those Q&As linked in the description box. So I love you guys and I will see you in my next one. Mm -hmm.